Can we give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house of the Lord on this morning? I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercies are everlasting, and his truth endureth unto all generations. Well, good morning, everybody. If this is your first time with us this morning, I'm uh, Reverend Ken Anderson. I'm the senior pastor at Dale and Lee Haven United Methodist Churches in Middletown and towns in Delaware. I want to welcome you to another combined Dale and Lee Haven worship service on this, the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. Yes, sir. Sunday, August the 21st, uh -huh. 2022. This is another day that the Lord has made. Yes. We shall rejoice. We shall yes. be glad today. That's all right. We do want to welcome all of you that have joined us on Facebook Live, all of you that are on the conference call today, and those of you that are going to be watching this a little bit later on YouTube. And all of you that are joined us, have joined us in person right here at Dale United Methodist Church. We so thank God for all of you yes. that are watching this worship service on today. And just a reminder, next Sunday, August the 28th, it will be the fourth Sunday of the month, and you can join us in person or online as we partner with our partner church, Lee Haven, Amen. as we hold services, our worship services there at Lee Haven United Methodist Church in towns in Delaware. We look forward to a powerful service on next Sunday as well. As I said earlier, for those of you that get my Wednesday email, this is, uh, this is an exciting time to be a Christian. It's an exciting time to know the Lord, if you know what to look for. Amen. Amen. Exciting time to be in a relationship with one who declared in Revelations chapter 22, verse 13, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. I'm so glad that I know him on this morning, aren't you? Amen. And even though we live in a world that seems to have gone mad, we serve a God who declared that all things are working together for good. For those who love God to those who are called according to God's purposes. Can you say amen? amen? So today we are starting what may end up being a series. I don't know. I just felt a sense of urgency, even anxiousness about getting this word out. Some things that I believe are critical to being an overcomer in a day like today. And I will be... Uh, sharing that with you just a little bit later, but I'm excited for the prophetic words that God has been sharing uh, in this ministry over the last month. We've been hearing about stirring up the gift. We've been hearing about that we are justified by faith. We're the righteousness of God. We've been hearing about in this time and hour, we need to pray and to praise our way and that if we just find a place where we can get quiet in our secret place, the Lord will fight for us. So God is preparing us, has prepared us for the hour that we are in, and we're going to be sharing from the theme today, truth to ensure your victory in 2022. Not next year, not in 2024, but right here, this year of 2022. So we look forward to that word in just a few minutes. But at this time, I want to thank God for the return of our associate pastor here at Dale United Methodist Church, Amen. who's been on a little vacation. Yes. Amen. Yes. She said she needed to come back to church to get some rest. <laughs> Amen. And we know vacations are like that. But I'm going to turn the furtherance of this service over to her as she is our worship leader today. So join me in shouting amen as Reverend Diane Wood comes in her own way at this time. Amen, amen church. Praise it God. is good to be back in the house of the Lord. Yeah. It's always good to spend time with family, but family can wear you out. <laughs> but I thank God for the time that we had together. Bless the Lord. 
O oh, my, oh, my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name, for he, he has done great things. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before your holy presence this morning with thankful hearts. We praise you on today, dear God, for being God all by yourself, for being a God that sits high and looks low, understands what your people are in need of, supplies our every need, never turns your back on us, is always with us, dear God, and blessing us with blessings, Father God, that is of abundance. Lord, we just are grateful to you this morning for who you are. We thank you for your infinite wisdom. We thank you for being majestic. We thank you, Father God, for sitting above the circle of this earth. We thank you, oh God, for just reigning over us, Father God, because in this world that we live in today, Father God, there is so much turmoil that is going on, Father God. Lord, you don't know which way to go, but one way Way we do know is to keep our hand in your hand father God and you will show us you will lead us you will guide us father God and you will protect us oh God so God we bless you on today and we thank you for this worship service on this morning we thank you that we are able to come into your house dear God and worship you in spirit and in truth dear God so touch down right now dear God as only you can and bless this service God let your Holy Spirit permeate this building Father God as we worship you Father God and give you all the praise all the honor and all the glory in the mighty matchless name of Jesus who is author and finisher of our faith amen at this time I would like to I'm going to start off with um acknowledging visitors. It doesn't look like we have any visitors in our physical space, but we may have some visitors who's on the conference call line or will be on Facebook and later on our YouTube page. So our church family just wants to acknowledge and pray for you all yeah. that as you worship with us today, that God will do everything that God needs to do in your life. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Hearts touched by the Lord's kindness. We have shared together the blessings of God, Philippians 1 and 7. Can't help but be grateful. Thank you so much. Love, Geneva Skinner. Sister Skinner uh, resides in the home uh, across the street and she continuously allows us to use her water supply to fill the, the, the barrels. barrels, thank you, um, for our tent extravaganza. So the church gave her a donation of $100 and in return she gave the church back 50 So we just thank and praise God for her faithfulness. Amen. Amen. If there is anyone in need of food, please contact Sister Marguerite Donas at area code 302-508-9207. Youth Sunday School will meet today at 1230. The topic of discussion will be no better refreshment. The Monday noonday hour of prayer meets every Monday at 12 noon. And this ministry is led by Minister David Kane. Uh -huh. If you have a prayer request that you would like presented during tomorrow's hour of prayer, please send your request today to Minister Kane's email at jesusmyhero3927 at gmail.com. If you desire to listen in on the prayer call, you may do so by dialing 425-436-6398. Nine one access code six seven nine three five nine to attend Dale and Lee Haven UMC combined worship service in person. Please register at any time up to and including Saturday until five p.m. 
Registration will close at 5 on Saturday or when it reaches capacity, whichever comes first. For security and safety reasons, the door of the sanctuary bill will be secured by 1020 a.m. Mask wearing is mandatory until further notice. Please keep our bereaving families in your prayers. Remember Sister Marguerite Donas, who has lost her brother-in-law. And also, I just found out this morning that one of our youth, Sister J.C. Collins, lost her mother on Friday. So let's lift these families up in prayer. At this time, we'll ask Minister Kane to come forward and pray for our congregants and our sick and shut-in. Yes. Thank you, Reverend Wood, for those announcements. Uh, we praise and thank God, whom all blessings flow, um, and not to hinder the service, but Reverend Henry had given me a prayer guidance that she wanted to share with me. And through reading of that guidance, it was something that I already had um, in my pocket, but I praise and thank God, yes, for iron shopping iron, because when I park here in the parking lot, I'm normally the first one here and the last one leave. But when I exit my car, I'm praying from the parking lot all the way to the sanctuary door. Once entering the sanctuary, I go around and touch every door, asking God to shield it and protect it. That's very important. See, some things is beyond the scenes that sometimes we may not have knowledge of. But that's a prayer warrior. That's what you have to do. You're supposed to even walk around the building and ask God to keep his angels so that the enemy can come through like a flood. So just remind, I thank you, Reverend Henry, for that, that guidance. But uh, we serve a good God. Those who know the power of prayer, pray with me. Our Father and our God, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, once again, O oh God, this very day, we come at your throne of grace through our Lord and personal Savior, Jesus Christ. We are reminded, O oh God, in your word that no one can come to you except, O oh God, through your Son, our Savior, that is seated at the right hand side of you. So this morning, O oh God, we continue to yield to your sovereignty, O oh God. This morning, O oh God, we continue to be obedient, O oh God, because we are mindful, O oh God, obedience is better than sacrifice. But this morning, O oh God, we have some hearts that are heavy. O oh God, you heard the request, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. O oh God, she used to be, and O oh God, she have wings, O oh God, to dance like David, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Yes, O oh God, Sister J.C., O oh God lost her mother oh god you already knew oh god the time of the point of death oh god but this family needs you oh god she's a youth oh god but she needs strengthening oh god so we lift the family up oh god we lift her up we stand on authority of your word oh god that blesses is he that mourn that they shall be comforted matthew 5 4 oh god stretch out your hand to this family oh god and, oh, God, we continue, oh, God, to pray, oh, God, that those that are grieving this morning, oh, God. How about the Sanders family? Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Heavenly Father, there is death in the family, oh, God. But, oh, God, we reckon, oh, God, that, oh, God, that their loved ones here fall asleep in Christ Jesus. They will see their loved ones again. But in the meanwhile, oh, God, we continue to stand in the gap. We continue to touch and agree, oh God, for the families, oh God, that's still in mourning. And oh God, in the meanwhile, oh God, we have some folks that are still sick and shut in, oh God, in the name of Jesus. They need your strength, oh God. They need your healing, oh God. They stand on authority of your word. Oh God, in the book of Isaiah, oh God, that by your stripes that they are healed. Oh God, stretch out your hand to thee, oh God. You hear the cry, oh God. You know the names that's written in the little red book. Oh, God, you hear the cries on the fourth watch of the night at 3 a.m., oh, God. When others are sleeping and slumbering, oh, God, that the intercessors is standing in the gap. Oh, God, this morning, oh, God, we have some folks, oh, God, that's not here this day because they are sick and shut in, oh, God. Oh, God, go down to Rehabilitation Center. Go in Christiana, oh, God. Go down to Pam, oh, God. Oh, God, strengthen these people, oh, God. 
They need you, oh God. Let them hear from heaven this day, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And oh God, after this all said and done, oh God, I'm quite sure there'd be like the one out of the ten that come back and say, look what Jesus done for me. Have your way this day, oh God. Bless your word, oh God. And oh God, we promise you, after it's all said and done, Pastor, we'll be so careful to continue to give you the glory, to give you the honor, and to give you the praise. Almighty powers of Calvary, victory in Jesus' name. Let God's children say amen. 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 That's right. Lift him up. Give him a hand clap. He deserves every bit of it. Give him a hand clap. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to God. We will now have Brother Alan Hitchner come forward with our scripture reading this morning. I, I, I emailed him and he was delighted to read the word of God. So we praise God for that. And then after scripture, we will have our tithe and offering by Pastor Ken. Good morning, everyone. First, I want to just say to you, what a blessing the Holy Spirit projects to me through you. You bless me, and I'm grateful for all of you. This is the New International Standard Bible, key, key word Bible, and I'm going to read from Genesis, from Exodus, and from Galatians. Genesis 17, two, 1 to 2, 7 and 9, part of 10. Now, when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appointed to Abram, excuse me, when Abram was 99, his name wasn't changed yet. Uh, when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will establish my covenant between you, between me and you, and I will multiply you exceedingly moving to seven I will uh, and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after, after you throughout all generations for everlasting for an everlasting covenant and be God to you and to your descendants nine God said further to Abraham his name has been changed. He's, he's, he's in league with God now. Uh, now, as for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you throughout their generations. And this, this is my covenant, that you shall keep me, that you shall keep between me and you and your descendants after you. Um, Exodus uh, 24, six, uh, 6 to 8. And uh, Moses took uh, half of the blood and put it in basins, and, uh, the, and the other half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. Amen. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it, in the hearing of the people. And they said, all that the Lord has spoken, we will do. We will be obedient. So Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, behold, the blood of the covenant, which it, the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. So on the Galatians 3, uh, 13 to 16, and then 29. Christ uh, redeemed us from the curse of the law, yeah. having become a curse for us, for it was written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. In order that Christ, in order that in Christ Jesus, the blessings of Abraham 
might come to the Gentiles so that we might, be, we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And 29, oh, one more. We've got a couple more here. Brethren, I speak in terms of uh, human relations. Even though it is only a man's covenant, yet when it has been ratified, no one sets it aside or adds conditions to it. Now the promise we uh, now the promises we were now the promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed. He does not say to his seeds, referring to many, but rather to one and to your seed, that is Christ. 29. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. Thank you, Lord. Say amen, everybody. How many of you are Abraham's offspring? Amen. I love that version. And if you are his Abraham's offspring, the scripture says you are an heir according to the promise he just read. We're going to talk about that today. Amen. We just thank God for the word of the Lord and the worship service so far. And for those of you that are with us in person and those of you that are with us on the conference call line and on Facebook. I saw a couple people walk in. I think they're visitors. I think I know who one of them is, but they're sitting with Sister Joy. Joy, you want to introduce, have your guests say something to us? Amen. We thank God for them today. Amen. Hi, Stephanie. Bless you. Amen. 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 Well, we thank God that you came to visit Sister Joy. We call her Sister Joy. And that, because you could have gone to Starbucks, y'all could have gone to Dunkin' Donuts, but you came to the house of the Lord. So we thank God for you. And we pray that God would speak to your heart through what happens here today. As we prepare to receive our tithes and offering, there's a very powerful and hopeful passage of scripture in the book of Hebrews in chapter 10, mm -hmm. verses 35 through 37, that I think we can apply to a number of areas in our lives where we are standing in faith before God. Mm -hmm. Having prayed and yet believing and even though by faith we believe that we receive when we ask, we may not have yet seen the physical manifestation of that which you're praying about. Amen. Right. We all have been there at, at, at one time or another, many of us there right now. But listen to these different translations of Hebrews chapter 10 verses 35 through 37 that I believe encourages us in that circumstance where we have a promise from God, very similar to the promises that were just read by Brother Allen, and we are standing in faith, trusting in the Lord Amen. while we wait. Amen. While we wait. Now, this is the English Standard Version of Hebrews 10, verses 35 through 37, and it reads, Therefore, do not throw away your confidence which has great reward, for you have need of endurance. You have need of patience so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. My Lord. Now this is from the Passion Translation. I didn't even know, Pastor, there was a Passion Translation, but I like this translation. So don't lose your bold, courageous faith. That's right. For you are destined. Did y'all hear that? You are destined for a great reward. That's right. You need the strength of endurance. There it is again. There it is again. 
to reveal the poetry of God's will, and then you will receive the promise in full. And last but not least, my personal favorite from the message translation, it reads like this. So don't throw it all away now. Your confidence in God's promise. Don't throw it all away now. That's right. You were sure of yourselves then. It's still a sure thing. But you need to stick it out. Staying with God's plan so you'll be there for the promise completion. It won't be long now. That's what this says. It won't be long now. He's on the way. He'll show up most any minute. My Lord. Woo! Church family, in our tithes, our offerings, our gifts, our love offerings, we have Bible-based Promises from God. All you need to do is wait on it. All you need to do is endure. All you need to do is persevere and pray and praise God while you wait. Amen. The message translation said it's still a sure thing. But you need to stick it out. Staying with God's plan. So you'll be there for the promised completion. Amen. That's a word from the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. If this is your first time with us this morning, or if you're not a member of Dale or Lee Haven, and the Lord has placed it on your heart to bless this ministry, you can share your gift electronically through Cash App by contacting Sister Jane Archie at 302-598-5516 for contributions to Dale. And for contributions to Lee Haven, you can reach out to Sister Cindy. Her number is 302-653-7619. Or you can just get out that envelope, get a pen, paper, and stamp, and mail those gift ties and offerings to Dale. You can mail them to Dale UMC, P.O. Box 190, Middletown, Delaware, 19709. And for Lee Haven, you can mail them to 413 Blackbird Landing Road, P.O. Box 279, Towns in Delaware, 19734. This seems so natural now. We've been doing it this way for all, over two years. And before that, we never did it this way. But God has blessed us as we have been obedient to make provision for this format that we are in post-COVID. Amen. Let's pray over our tithes and offerings at this time. Amen. God, we're thankful for your blessing us, for your, for your grace towards us, for your faithfulness to us, to the many of our tithers and those that are faithful in their stewardship among, the, among us and how you have blessed them, how you have been faithful Amen. to your word. We're just grateful, Lord, to have the opportunity to participate yes. in your financial system. And Lord, we know that we are in this world, but we are not of the world. And there's a whole different system of finances that we have to be a part of. But Lord, we're not relying on that system. We're relying on your system where you said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Men and women will give unto your bosom. Lord, you don't multiply like the world multiplies right. you said that if we'd be faithful in this mm -hmm. that to some you would give 30 some 60 and some a hundred full return a hundred x return if we take this seriously so lord we are faithful in this and we continue to strive to perfection in this area of our lives lord i want you to bless those that may be don't have the income that they desire right now, those that are out of a job, those that are concerned about being laid off of a job. Yeah. Lord, I want you yeah. to encourage them to try you, yeah. that you might open a door that might be closed right now, that through their faithfulness and their finances, yeah. you make somebody say yes, that had their mind made up to say no, Jesus. that you would make a way where there was no way. Yeah that you would show them that there is a God 
that cares about their whole situation today. We thank you, Lord, that we know you. We thank you, Lord, that we're in a covenant relationship with you. We thank you, Lord, that you won't break that promise, that relationship that was established in your own blood. So we're grateful today. And we thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do among us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Let everybody say amen and amen. Thank you for that tithe and offering lesson this morning. We serve an awesome God. And if we just hang on in there, God will provide for us and God will take care of us. If we keep our faith and trust, you know what God can do because we have all have experienced what God can do. We will have our solo now by Sister Lavanya Johnson, followed by her solo. We will have our word for today, a truth that will ensure your victory Glory. in 2022. Oh, Thank you. Wow. Yeah. Thank you, good morning, good morning. You know, as you ponder what you're gonna sing, you just never know. And this one song just kept, just kept popping up so I said um I, that's fitting because you know a lot of people said I wasn't going to make it Jesus. you know and they talked about me you don't know my story because if you knew my story, <laughs> you would be like, well, how? How is she still standing? But I try to not project what I've been through. And I'm yet still holding on. They said I wouldn't make it. They said I wouldn't be here today. They said I'll never amount to anything. But I'm glad to say that I'm on my way. And I'm growing more and more each day. There were many that started out with me but now they've gone astray but i'm still holding on i'm still holding on lord i'm still holding on to his hand. You see, when I was young, I gave God my hand, and I told him to lead the way. Though the road's been rough, and the going's been mighty tough, still I ain't going nowhere. I'm right here to stay. Though I've been talked about and all oh, I've been criticized, I had to wipe many tears from my eyes. But I'm still holding on. Lord, I'm still holding. Tribulations, I'm still holding on. Yes, I'm in God's holy plan. Though they 
talked about me, I'm still on and on. Yes, I'm bound for that promised land. I will never, I'll never let go of his hand. Through hard trials, through tribulation, I'm still on and on. Yes, I'm in God's, God's holy plan. Though they scandalize my name, I'm still on and on. Yes, I'm bound for the promised land. I will never, I'll never let go of his hand. I will never. I'll never let go of his hand. Somebody say praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. How many of you can say that you'll never let go of his hand? Amen. They may talk about you. They may say you'll never make it. They might write you off. But if you can just hold on to God's unchanging hand. When I was growing up, I don't know they have, if they have this commercial anymore, but it was an insurance company that said, you're in good hands. <laughs> I think you're in good hands with all states. But you're in good hands. You're in great hands. With someone, the Bible said, has the whole world in his hands. Yes. Well, once again, Sister Lavania, you blessed us. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. We got to make room to hear the rest of that testimony. Thank you, Lord. Thank God. Well, I'm just happy to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Amen. I, I need to get this message off of me. Amen. I, I, I wish church was on Wednesday instead of Sunday because that's, that's how this word came to me this week. This is really third Sunday. I'd like to have the associate pastor to share with us, but God said, get this out there. Get this out there because we're in a very, very, very unique time in the things of God that you can also see reflected in what's going on in our world today. Yeah. I first want to give honor to my Lord and Savior Christ, yes, the anointed one at this another combined Dale and Lee Haven Sunday morning worship service. So happy to be in the house of the Lord with you one more time. And for those of you that are online and uh, will be watching this on YouTube, you can also be a part of the spirit of this place, yeah. even though you are watching remotely. We thank God for you as well. Church family, this is a prophetic season. I hope that you have a sense about that. It's important for us to be aware spiritually of what we see in the world taking place. There's a connection. We're seeing things in real time and even in the midst of what some describe as chaos and confusion for the believer. For those of us that know the Lord, these are not, as I heard someone say earlier this week, these are not gloomy days, but these are glory days. Look at somebody and say, these aren't gloomy days. These are glory days, if you know the Lord, if you know Christ. And like the psalmist said in the 27th Psalm, and I think around verse 13, 
if you've been struggling, if you've been having a rough time, Christ makes the difference. The psalmist said, I would have lost heart. I would have given up if I did not expect to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Christ makes a difference. Christ makes a difference. And for whatever reason, God has allowed us, members of Dale and Lee Haven and those that aren't members but are watching our worship services remotely, allowed us to be alive and to be saved, to be a member of the church, to be a member of the bride of Christ in a season where I am anticipating an unprecedented move of God. That's what I'm looking for, where we can look forward to God's intervention, where you and I can look forward to God's deliverance, where we can look for God to show up in your situation, for God to restore, to God to deliver, for God to set things right. Anybody in here needs something to be set right, to be corrected, to be restored, to be fixed? We are in such a season, and you are alive to, to, to be a part of it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why God chose you to be a part of what's going on. I don't know why you didn't leave here during COVID. But for whatever reason, God has allowed you to see what is going on and be a part of what God is doing in this moment. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just. Just lift your hand and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. I'm going to take full advantage of why you have left me here to see what you're up to. So for those of you that have placed your hope and your trust in Christ today, that is what you have to look forward to. I'm not talking 10 years from now. I'm talking in your immediate future. Look at somebody and say, my immediate future. I need God to show up in my immediate future. So know this morning that God is with us. God is with us. Now we've been using that phrase for some time on our Facebook image. God is with us. And recently I found out that John Wesley, the founder of the United Methodist Church, is believed to have uttered those words before, just before he passed away. The words, God is with us. Actually, they say he said, best of all. Best of all. With, all, with everything else that God brings to us when we live for him. He said, best of all, God is with us. In your darkest hour, God is with us. When you feel all alone by yourself, like nobody cares what's going on in your world, the truth is, God is there. When your best friend walks away and says, I don't want to have anything to do with you anymore. Somebody's still there. God is with you. God is with us. So this morning, no matter the situation you might have brought into this church this morning, no matter what you might be going through, no matter what you are concerned about, no matter what you might be worried about, no matter what deadline you have in front of you that you don't know how you are going to be able to resolve, one thing you can have great certainty about that God is there. God is there. God is there. And even though it might look like curtains in your situation, Psalm said you will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Lord have mercy. You might feel like the enemy's trying to kill you, but no. You might see the goodness of the Lord in the land 
of the living. My, my, my. So, the Lord's been dealing with me for some time now, and as I shared more recently with an increased sense of urgency to bring forth a truth that needs to be refreshed among us and firmly established in our hearts. Now, if you've been a member for Dale Lee Haven, this is not a new word. We've shared it a couple different times, but the Lord is saying, refresh. Get firmly established in this. That says to me, something is up. Something is up. When we hear that in the light of what the Lord has already spoken from this pulpit, starting for about a year ago, and what we have seen happen since. This truth is one of the first important, most important truths in the word of God that was ministered to me about 35 years ago when I first came to really know the Lord. Did you hear what I said, really know the Lord? Because I'm older than 35, right? I still look okay, but I'm older than 35, right? And, and, and I, I've been in church. I, I, my mama dragged me to church on Sunday when I was 10 years old. If I didn't go to church, I couldn't come out on Sunday. Now, our parents don't do that today. They should. We, our children might be a whole lot better. But so, so I've been in church basically all my life. But I was hearing, but I never really heard. I never really heard until my first year of college. I could quote scripture like a preacher at 15 years old. But I didn't know what I was talking about. I didn't know the one who I was talking about. I could dress up, look like I was a church person, and was living in darkness. I knew how to be churchy. I knew how to talk like church people. I knew how to act like them, had been around them all my life. But I was, I was a zombie. Living, breathing, but void of the Spirit of God on the inside. I don't know why, why I went there, but this truth that I heard one day impacted me and has impacted me even up to this very moment. If there is a so-called secret to my success, is embedded in this word that we're going to refresh, reestablish. Because we're at general quarters. Those of you that are in the military know that just before you, you went to an urgent situation at sea or in the army, military, you, you, you went to what they call general quarters. Bells and whistles would go off. You put on all your armor. You put your helmet. You got, a, you got your, your most dangerous weapons. And you went to your bunker or you went to your duty station because something was about to go down. Something was go about, about to go down. So this truth has kept me during challenging times in my life during dark days, and I've had a couple, and it is because of this truth that we will revisit this together again this morning. You might, you might ask, well, why now, Pastor? I would answer because it looks like it's about to get real in this world that we are in. Even though these are exciting times if you know the Lord, if you know the Lord, because your ship is about to come in. Can you say amen? amen? For those of you watching today who may be new and are not familiar with some of what the Lord has ministered through us recently, just know that we are in a very unique season on God's calendar. Maybe not your calendar, but on God's calendar calendar. It started on September the 6th, 2021, and it ends on or about September the 24th, 
2022. That's about 34 days from now. It's a sabbatical year that we are in. But on the Jewish calendar, it is not just a sabbatical year, it's the 50th sabbatical year, which is a jubilee year, which occurs every seventh Sabbath year. They call it a Shema, which means it happens every 50 years. Very unique. And we're here in it. And most people and most pastors I know don't even know about it. Jesus. Come on. And historically, when celebrated by the Orthodox Jews, they would look forward to economic cultural, environmental, and community resets. Restructuring. A time and a season when the land and the people would have a time of rest. And those who were held captive in any way would be set free. Anybody need to be set free from something? Yeah. From something? Now, there are some Jews who would tell you that they don't practice this today. But when you observe the chaos, the turmoil, the obvious restructuring that is taking place literally in every segment of our world today, many believe, including your pastor, prophetically, that God is up to something unprecedented that nobody alive today has ever seen in their lifetime. The thing that comes closest to it is what we read in the book of Exodus. When the Hebrews who had been captive in Egypt for 400 years, after God dealt with them, Pharaoh through plagues, even resulting in the death of Pharaoh's own son. Finally, Pharaoh let the people go. And they didn't leave empty-handed. They left with silver and gold and the riches of Egypt that they helped cultivate in the first place. And the Bible says when they walked out of Egypt, there was not a feeble or a weak one among them. That's the closest thing that I can share with you about the moment that we are in. God's up to something, especially in the light of some things that took place 50 years ago in this country that many Christians believe did much harm to this country spiritually, even offended God. And all of a sudden, God's dealing with those things, I believe. Now, whatever you might think about Roe versus Wade, just put that aside for a minute. But that is something that most people consider settled law. And it was legislated just about 50 years ago. Everybody remember what happened? I think it was in. February, the Supreme Court, court overruled it. About 50 years ago, Richard Nixon went before the TV in August, almost exactly August 15th, just a, a week ago, comparatively. And the gold standard, which made the money we have valuable, worth something, accountable to a standard, he took us off the gold standard. And we've been paying for that ever since. In a dollar that is worth 90% less than what it was worth, let alone inflation and 1% only 95% of the wealth. That did harm to most people in this country, especially most black people in this country. So it seems that something special about this 50 year 
sabbatical year. And so during this sabbatical year, it appears that a restructuring is taking place. Chaos and confusion is a result because there are some on the top that are going to have to be dealt with, it seems. For there, be, for there to be equity, for there to be balance, for there to be continuity and fairness among humanity. The Lord is making the crooked path straight, setting th some things in order, setting the captive free. God is breaking yokes, taking down some and setting up another. Only God can do that. And it's happening in every segment of our society, and not just here in the United States and Western countries, but it's happening glo globally. Right now, it's happening. And so for the rest of the month of August, and as we approach September the 24th, 2022, the end of this 50th sabbatical year, and as we move into the period of the Jewish festival known as the Feast of Trumpets. Go look it up when you get a chance. You need to know about the Feast of Trumpets because we might see equivalency with the Feast of Trumpets of old in this moment, in this moment. The Lord urged me to remind us when it looks like things are even out of more control than they've already been, the Lord wants you to know that he is yet in control. God is yet in control. Can you, can you believe that? God is yet in control. He's Alpha. He's Omega. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows everything in between. He allows some things until he gets ready to make his move. And what I'm telling you today, he's about to make a move. He's about to make a move. And in the process of making that move, he might tear up some stuff. He might have to restructure some things. Those that are doing exceptionally well might have to feel what it feels like to be in need for a minute. As God equalizes things. As God makes things fair. Some, po some folk, not everybody, but some folk got what they are by messing over folk. God's going to make it right. Somebody got a promotion because they knew somebody. And you were more qualified. You were better at it. You had been there long enough, and you didn't get it. God's going to fix that. God's going to take down some and pull up another. That's what's happening. That's what's going on. I couldn't have done that. Because I'm not God and my methods would have been different. Because I haven't always been saved. My methods would have been different. I haven't always been quote unquote sophisticated. My approach to some of this foolishness would have been different. It's hard for me, even now, the pastor, to see injustice in front of me and not want to dial in, not want to pull up. Only a God can position himself and allow some things to take place that you and I couldn't stand to see take place and be strategic. Because he's able to fix something, even though it already has happened, because he's God that you couldn't fix. I, I hope y'all understand what's going on right now. You're here to be a part of it. Some of us have been suffering in certain areas for most of our adult life, it seems. And you've been a believer and you wonder why it hasn't gotten resolved to the desire of your heart. I'm here to tell you God has you on his mind. He has you in his plans. And if thou canst believe, all things are possible. If you can just believe, if you can just believe, if you can just hold on a little bit longer. 
God wants you to know who you are and whose you are. And that we are in a covenant, a contract with Jehovah himself. Now, I know I used to be, y'all know I used to oversee small business, entrepreneurship for the state of Delaware, worked for the governor's office. I saw a lot of so-called entrepreneurs. I saw people get these big contracts. And boy, they thought they, they thought they was a much a much. They got a contract with, whatchamacallit. They got a contract with, with Wynn's company, W.L. Gore. They, they got a, comp, a contract with DuPont, or they got a contract with AT&T. And they had a right to be proud, but boy, they, 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 they thought they could walk on water now. You have a covenant, if you know the Lord. Now, this is not for everybody. You have to know the Lord for this to be true. But if you know Christ for real, you have a covenant with Jehovah, with Elohim, with El Shaddai. You have a contract with God, and it's written in the blood of Jesus. So the Lord wants you to know that our redemption, redemption draweth nigh. Your deliverance draweth nigh. Your rest restoration draweth nigh. Your healing draweth nigh. That which was done wrong to you, the fix of that draweth nigh. The manifestation of your answered prayer draweth nigh. The miracle that you need right now draweth nigh. Boy, if that don't get you excited, something wrong with you. Well, the Lord needs us needs you, members of his church, the bride of Christ, needs us to be ready to be in position to be the church, to serve the lost that will be hurting and that are hurting, to serve the bewildered, the desperate, tired men and women, boys and girls who will return to their first love because there's so much chaos, who will return to the house of the Lord where they walked away, who will renew their faith in God because they've seen some things that they thought they would never see. Their security blanket has been pulled right from under them unexpectedly. They thought they would have that job until they retired. And all of a sudden, that job is gone. And they're realizing that life without Christ is not only unfruitful, it's dangerous. Life without Christ is not working in the world to come. Even agnostics who don't believe in anything, they don't disbelieve God because they don't even believe there is a God. Even them will see what's happening in the earth and they'll have to say something that they thought they would never say. There must be a God somewhere. There must be a God somewhere. There has to be. The word of the Lord came to us first about a year ago from Matthew 24, verse 6, which says, And ye shall hear wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled. That's what the word said. Uh -huh. And it kept coming to us. It says, see that you be not troubled. Yeah. For all these things must come to pass. Yeah. Right. These things must come to pass. And then the word of the Lord said, but the end is not it's yet. Not yet. Yeah. That's right. Some of these things that we see come to pass, most Christians believe, well, the rapture must be coming. The spirit of the Lord said, the end is not yet. Not yet. The end Ooh. is not yet. So we are in what I have been referring for several months as our in the meantime moment. In the meantime moment. What do we do until the Lord comes for us? What do we do in the meantime? 
We get ready. We get healed. We get positioned. We get our finances together. We get the church ready to receive those who are going to be screaming and desiring and desperate for God. That's what we do. That's what we do. And so starting this morning, the Lord needs us to be established to understand with certainty that no matter what may lie in the days and weeks ahead, to know that we are in a covenant with Jehovah that cannot be broken because it's sealed in the blood of Christ. It's a blood covenant. It's a blood covenant. I want to thank Reverend Wood for reading that scripture early. I want to just read Exodus chapter 24, verse 6 to 8 one more time. And Moses took half of the blood. Thank you for that reading, Brother Allen. Brother Allen's a theologian. Did y'all know that? <laughs> that? That brother, that brother comes with us with some deep yes. stuff yes. at least three times a week. Yes. Amen. Yes. <laughs> and Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. This is Moses in Exodus. And he took the book of the covenant, the book of the covenant, and read in the audience of the people. He read it in the audience of those that were before him. And they said, all that the Lord hath said will we do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, behold the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. Now if I can, turn with me or write this scripture down and read it later. It is from the New Testament or what we could just as easily refer to as the new covenant. Mm -hmm. And let's look at Galatians 3, verses 13 through 16. This is one of the most powerful verses for the believer in the, in, in the entire word of God. Yeah. If you get this down to your spirit, you can go through just about anything. Mm -hmm. Galatians 3, verses 13 through 16 and verse 29. It reads, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us, for it's written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Verse 15, Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or added thereto. Verse 16, now to Abraham and his seed, notice there's not, that's not plural, that's seed. It's a category of person. It's referring to a category. And I want you to know that category refers to you if you know Christ. So look at this from this context. He says, now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. That includes you. That includes us. He saith not to seeds as of many, but as of one. And to thy seed, which is Christ, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Verse 29. Here's the kicker. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, and you're an heir according to the promise. Some of y'all got stuff that you haven't claimed and you're an heir. I wish somebody would tell me I'm heir to something. I wish somebody would send an envelope. One of, you know, you got a sign for it, Brother Black said, and, and I open it up and says, you are an heir to Umpty Ump. You need to be in California by, by, by Wednesday, and this is a Sunday. I'm getting a ticket. If I got to put it on American Express, I'm getting a ticket to find out who got my stuff. You should feel the same way about this promise. If you know Christ, you are an heir to some stuff. You should be anxious to find out what am I an heir to? What's been promised to me? This verse 29 or what we just read should keep you up at night. 
Have you ever entered into a contract with someone? You got a credit card, you got a cell phone, you have. I know some of y'all didn't read the contract. And you paid the cost for not reading the contract. I can see, I can see people shaking. Yeah, brother, pastor, yeah. I didn't read it, but you've entered into a contract. A contract is an agreement with both parties agreed to do something. That's right, that's right. The modern day contract comes from the concept of covenant. A covenant is a contract or an agreement between two or more parties where someone makes an offer, I don't want to get too legal here, but you need to understand this, where someone makes an offer and someone else accepts the offer. Been a long time since I went to law school, but this is, this is legal. You learn, this is one of the first things you learn in law school. The legal terms, in legal terms, you must have a valid offer and a valid acceptance, something known in the law as consideration, in order to have a valid contract. Y'all follow that? So if two more people enter into an agreement to supply products and services to do this or to do that, and there is a payment or some sort of compensation associated with their agreement. Then you have consideration and now, under the law, you have a legally binding contract. And if you fail to do, at this point, what the contract, contract says, they'll call it, they call it a breach of contract. And you can be sued. Now that's true both in this world and to some degree in God's system. Except in God's system, under the Old Testament protocol, blood was always involved. Blood was in, involved. I'm not going to talk about the details of that this Sunday, but as the Lord says, maybe next Sunday. To violate that agreement or fail to do what you said you would do, would place you in breach, you would be in breach, you would have violated the agreement, broken the contract. In our natural laws, it would make you subject to legal remedies, as I said. Now, under the Old Covenant, to break a covenant, under the Old Testament, to breach a covenant, usually meant that blood would have to be shed. Because most of those covenants were sealed in what? Blood. They were sealed in blood. Right. They were blood covenants. Uh -huh. You break it, blood had to be shed. Something would have to die because most covenants were sealed in an elaborate ceremony that involved the shedding of blood. What can wash my sins away? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, how precious is the flow that made me white as snow. No other font I know. Nothing but the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood, was the blood. Was the blood for me. One day when I was lost, and I was lost, y'all. He died on the cross. And I know it was the blood for me. There are various kinds of covenants throughout the word of God. I'm going to close for today, but some are conditional, some are unconditional. And some were general. In conditional covenants, both parties have to both do something. Do what they agree to do for the covenant to work. If those requirements are not fulfilled, then the covenant is broken. Now, general covenants are not specific to one people group and can involve a wide range of people, but unconditional covenants, unconditional covenants are made with no strings attached. Lord, help us. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Unconditional covenants. That 
is what God made with us. Are made with no strings attached. And will be kept by God. Regardless of whether you break it or not. Regardless of one party's fidelity or infidelity to it. God made with Israel over time the Abrahamic, Palestinian, Davidic, and Mosaic covenants. The first three, Abrahamic, Palestinian, and Davidic covenants were unconditional. They were unconditional. In other words, regardless of whether Israel was and is obedient to God or not. Are you listening to me? God would not back out of his covenant with Israel. As crazy and as disobedient as they were. God won't back out of his agreement with you as disobedient and as crazy God will fulfill his covenant now they might suffer they might be delayed Israel wandered in the wilderness for 40 years and most theologians believe it was really an 11-day trip. How long have we been delayed and wandered for a legitimate promise that God had for us because of our own disobedience? It hasn't come forth. You blaming the supervisor. You haven't seen manifestation yet. You're blaming the devil. Israel might have to go through things that God does never desired for them to have to go through. It wasn't desired for them. But at the end of the day, somehow, some way, through hell or high water, God would continue yeah. to bless them. Yeah. What kind of God is that? Yeah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Think about yourself. Most of us, if we were in the Old Testament, they would have executed us. Jesus demonstrated a covenant relationship when Mary Magdalene was taken in the act of adultery. No, they didn't say she committed adultery. She was discovered in the very act. They could legitimately stone her to death. And they tried to. And then... Yahshua showed up. That's right. Yay. Woo. Good God. <laughs> Jesus yeah. walked up on this. Yes, uh -huh. And the Bible says he stayed, depending on what version you read, uh -huh. it says that he bent down in the middle to people uh -huh. with stones in their hands, uh -huh. getting ready to throw and do what the law said do. And Jesus, Jesus bent down. They, nobody really knows what he wrote. I hear some people trying to say what he wrote. But he wrote and started writing. I think he was just waiting for the right moment. That's something I'd do. That's something I would do. If I knew I was Jesus and I could make some stuff happen, that's why I'd get down there and just start writing on Just write, or start writing on something. I'm not saying anything, not meaning anything. I'm not writing nothing. I just started. <laughs> Jesus started writing, and he said, which was contrary to the law at that time. Jesus was writing a new law, as only he could do, because he was God in the flesh. He was God in the flesh. 
And he said, uh -huh. yeah. anybody out there with a stone in your hand? Yeah. <laughs> if you're without sin, right. you throw the first stone. You throw the first one. And I imagine there was a long, pregnant pause. <laughs> and then everybody started slowly walking away, dropping their stones in the process. That's what covenant relationship looks like. And God is refreshing and reestablishing in us in this truth for a reason. Now, next time the Lord's saying the same, we may take a break a, a Sunday off, but I want to I wanna describe to you what the blood covenant ceremony was like because it was d directly related to the crucifixion of Christ. And you'll never look at the crucifixion the same ever, ever again. Every head bowed. God, we thank you for what you're sowing in us through this word. We know that it's being done for a reason, that we might be established in you, that we might know who we are and whose we are, that if there is things that we might see in the days that lie ahead that seem unseemly to us, where the enemy might attempt to bring fear in our hearts that we would remember that we have a covenant with God today and that we would know that you have already covenant that you would take care of us that you would provide for us that even in the midst of chaos and confusion you would make a way where for some there was no way that you would be a river in the desert for those for whom you have chosen. So we rejoice in you today. We thank you for what you're bringing and what you're doing in our midst. Bless everyone that's with us today. Meet every need that's uh, under the sound of my voice. If there's someone that doesn't know the Lord today, I pray that they would hear something that would cause them to inquire of somebody they believe knows Christ. That they might ask the question, what must I do to be saved? We thank God for them. We ask all this in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let everybody say, Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Amen. We thank God for that word, and we'll continue at the appropriate time with the rest of that story. So you can know who you are, who you are. Yeah. and you can walk up, uh -huh. walk with your head up, yeah. knowing who you're in contract with That's today. Yeah. I just want to mention, I, th I, I know most of you, when you came up here, you may have noticed that our, our church looked really, really exceptional. It's clean all the time, but it looked exceptionally clean ah. this morning. I, did yeah. Somebody noticed, I noticed as I pulled up. Well, I just want you to know that our one of our trustees, Brother Curtis Easton, amen, he's not here today, but he um, donated a power wash to our building, amen, amen. And it was not inexpensive, so we thank God for that. We thank God for all of you, those of you that are online, those of you that are watching this on YouTube, for joining us today. We pray that the hand of God would be upon you, and I want to encourage you to be hopeful in this hour. Don't allow fear, doubt, and unbelief to enter into your soul, into your spirit. 
Know who you belong to and understand who has your back in this hour. Amen. Amen. Are all hearts and minds clear? Please join me in the benediction. Again, we are thank God for our visitors today. Feel free to come on in at any time. Amen. Thank God for you. Are all hearts and minds clear? Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty both now and forever. In the name of Christ Yeshua, we pray. Let everybody say, Amen.